All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo 6th generation ThinkPad X1 Carbon. All right, so first thing you'll notice, there's this little hole here on the bottom of the laptop. If your computer isn't turning on, you can try pressing and holding this button using a pin or a needle for about 10 to 15 seconds to reset the BIOS, and that sometimes will get the computer to turn back on. So to open up the laptop, you'll want to undo the five screws on the bottom. They don't come off the cover, so just undo them and then you can start opening it up. Next, you're going to want to get your fingernails or pry tools between the gap of the bottom cover and the frame, and then just pry it up. And you should be able to pull the cover all the way out, just like this. Here you can see the internal components of the entire laptop. This is a close-up of the battery, so if you need any part numbers or model numbers, you can see them here. The laptop uses an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, so if you want, you can upgrade it. Um, just undo the one screw, it'll pop up, and you can pull it out. Here you can see the wireless network card. If you want to remove it, uh, just pull up on the tails of the wireless antennas to remove them, and then there's one screw, it'll pop up like the SSD, and you can pull it out. If you want to see a video on how to remove that, almost all my other laptop repair videos show this. Here you can see the LCD LVDS cable connector. Um, if you mess with this cable, make sure to remove the battery and then open the computer and press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds to drain any power before messing with it. If you don't, you can seriously damage your computer. Here you can see another cable that goes into the screen as well. This is most likely for the webcam and the microphones, but if you do mess with this, again, make sure to remove the battery and press and hold the power button. Here's a little closer view of the connector to the left. Um, this is very likely for the USB 3.0 port. Uh, I didn't check underneath to see what it looks like, but most likely um, it is. You just lift the latch up and pull that connector out. Here you can see the connector for the speakers. Um, to remove the connector, you just grab the wings and then you slowly wiggle it as you pull it back and it should come out pretty easily. If it doesn't come out right away, just keep wiggling the wings and it should eventually pop out. All right, so now we're gonna remove the battery. Just remove the four screws here using a PH or JAS1 screwdriver. Once you've removed the four screws, you can get your fingernail or a pry tool under here and pop the battery connector out. Then lift the battery up at an angle like this and just pull it out. Here you can see the connector to the audio jack as well as the speakers. From left to right here you can see the connector for the fingerprint sensor as well as the trackpad. And then this looks like um, some other lights, maybe the keyboard backlight, the keyboard connector, and then the CMOS battery. Here's a better close up of the connector for I believe the webcam, the microphone, and then that other board to the left. And then here you can see the CPU uh, fan connector. The fan on this laptop was making a loud noise and having issues, so we're gonna repair it. First, we're gonna remove the four screws from the heat sink here. After you undo the four screws, you're gonna wanna move the heat sink forward and backwards to release the thermal paste, and then you can lift the heat sink up just like this. Here's what the bottom of the CPU heatsink and the CPU dies look like. Um, for some reason, there was no thermal paste on this, but if your computer had thermal paste, which it should, you'll want to clean it up with some isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. Um, just get a paper towel, get a little rubbing alcohol on it, and wipe it until you can clean off all the uh, thermal paste residue. To repair the fan, we're going to have to remove these four screws. Then you'll have to peel out the adhesive and then pull the fan away from the heat sink assembly just like this. Of course, you're gonna wanna clean out the dirt and dust inside. Just use a toothbrush to loosen it up and then use a, something to blow the dust away. I didn't get a picture of the removal process of the fan propellers, um, but to remove this fan propeller, it's very difficult. You have to get something small to fit through all the four little holes in the back of the fan so that you can apply even pressure to the propeller blades and then you can push down on the fan assembly and it'll push the propeller blades up and out. I believe I have a video of this process somewhere on my YouTube channel um, so if you want to see that just leave a comment below and I will try and find that and send that over to you. So in my fan repair videos I'm always using um, synthetic motor oil uh, from my car uh, usually I have a bottle of that oil lying around, but I was out at this at the time. So I actually went to my car, pulled the dipstick out, 
and then I got the oil from there. If you're not sure how to do this, um, you can ask your parents, maybe they'll know. And if they don't know, maybe find some YouTube videos on their car to how to change the oil. So once you pull the dipstick out, you'll see there's some oil on it. Um, you'll use a small needle or a toothpick to get the oil that's on there to transfer it over to the fan. Here you can see the needle with the oil on it that I'm putting into the area for the fan so that it can be lubricated. Now I'm going to be prepping the heat sink and the CPU die by cleaning it with isopropyl rubbing alcohol and a piece of paper towel. So you'll want to put a little rubbing alcohol on the paper towel and then just use that paper towel to rub the CPU die and the heat sink with it. So you'll clean it up and it should look nice and clean like this. Now we're going to be applying some icy diamond thermal paste. You can use whatever thermal paste you like, but this is what I use. You'll put like a small amount in a mound like this, um, kind of like the size of a grain of rice. So now I put the fan propeller blades back on um, and the grease should allow the fan to spin nice and smooth. Once you've done that, close the fan back up and then put back all four screws just like this. Then put the heatsink fan assembly back in with the left side first at an angle, just like this. Reconnect the fan connector. And then tighten down the screws in the order that they show, putting one, two, three, and then four, of course. Now put the battery back in at an angle like this. Then lay it in place and push the connector down. Put back the four battery screws. Then put the bottom cover in at an angle, starting with the bottom. Lay the rest of the cover down and tighten all the screws back up. Make sure to press all the edges back down so the clips all clip back into place. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video or slideshow helped you guys out. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.